Elder family, today we are going to consider Jesus' teaching on the great millstone as it applies to Jorge Bergoglio and how the best, people get mad at me because they say I'm just angry all the time, but that, the best thing we could do would be to tie the great millstone around Jorge Bergoglio's neck and throw him into the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. So before we address this great millstone applied to Jorge Bergoglio, let us begin with a gospel passage quoting St. John the Baptist, who was imprisoned and martyred 2,000 years ago just for standing up for traditional marriage. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In those days, John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. You see, there were sins. They had to acknowledge their sins. Back to the gospel, when he, John the Baptist, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers. Now, how do you say, it? you brood of vipers? No, of course not. How did John the Baptist, the greatest man born of women, when he sees a brood of vipers, how did he say it? Let's use the, the brains God gave us. You brood of vipers. He didn't even say it that pleasantly. You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be, not might be, will be cut down and thrown into the fire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, there you have it, dear family, the words of the greatest man born of woman, John the Baptist. Well, dear family, 10 days ago, I posted a 27-minute video that, near as, near as I can tell, has been viewed over a quarter million times on just two websites alone that faithful people established to post some of these things that I have said. And while most responses seem to have been very positive, there has been pushback after I stated the self-evident truth. Jorge Bergoglio is not Catholic, therefore he is not the Pope. There's been pushback over the conclusion Stated. So let us begin today's meditation on how Bergoglio should get Jesus's great millstone treatment, which is gospel truth from the mouth of our Lord himself. So with the words of St. John the Baptist still ringing in our heads, quote, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come into his baptism, he warned them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. With those words ringing in our heads, let us begin our meditation by hearing again exactly what I said in that video 10 days ago. Quote, memo to Bergoglio and every American cardinal, I accepted Cardinal Burke. When you die, and it won't be long, they are all old, and you meet Jesus Christ the Lord, beside him will be standing St. Tarsisius, who you know defended the Holy Eucharist unto death a 13-year-old boy beaten to death defending the Holy Eucharist from sacrilege. So beside him will be standing St. Tarsisius, St. Charles Luanga. Look, oh, I just did this, just today. Well, it was about 2 a.m. 
I didn't realize, this is an aside, I didn't realize that there was an actual picture of St. Charles Luang and his companions. I thought it was so long ago that there was no such thing as a picture. Let me tell you something. When I gazed upon that saint and all those young men who were brutally martyred because they refused to acquiesce to the king's homosexual advances, I was stunned. When you look at this new whole uh, synod on sodomy and you put that next to the picture of Saint Charles Luanga as his companions. Do you see the truth when I say beside Jesus will be standing Saint Tarsisius, Saint Charles Luanga and his companions and Saint Robert Bellarmin and they will block the entrance and watch you Jorge Bergoglio fall to your eternal damnation into the unquenchable fires of hell. That's how Jesus described it. Not making that up, not trying to be, uh, what's a good word for it, I don't know, uh, over explicit. Not trying to be over dramatic there. Those are, those are the words of Jesus. Unquenchable fires of hell, to which, back to the quote from that video 10 days ago, to which I only can say out of love and concern for the eternal souls you, Jorge Bergoglio, are leading astray cannot happen soon enough. End of quote. But a family, a lot of people have had a lot to say about a lot of things they know nothing about. And those who criticize those words are among them. A lot of them say, oh, it's good. Like, I've heard it. Oh, Father Altman, you're so angry. He needs to stop sounding so angry. So firstly, let us dispel the absurdity of that complaint with a quote from the greatest American bishop ever, the venerable Fulton J. Sheen, quote, real love involves real hatred. Whoever has lost the power of moral indignation and the urge to drive the buyers and sellers from the temples has also lost a living, fervent love of truth. Charity then, still quoting Fulton Sheen, charity then is not a mild philosophy of live and let live. It is not a species of sloppy sentiment. Charity is the infusion of the Spirit of God, which makes us love the beautiful and hate the morally ugly. End of quote from the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. So to all those who complain that I sound angry, amen, amen, I say to you, the truth is I am not too angry. The truth is I am not angry enough. And if you are not righteously angry beyond measure, you are the problem. In a temporal sense, you are the problem because something like six to eight billion dollars of your money has been paid because so many in the hierarchy permitted and promoted boy rapists and cover-up artists like Bergoglio did with McCarrick, with Whirl, with Daniels at Al. You are the problem because you are not angry enough that Donald Whirl still prances around in the cassock of a cardinal. And if you are not righteously angry in a spiritual sense, you are the problem because Bergoglio and his buddies have launched a 10-year campaign, a 10-year full frontal assault on the deposit of faith, the unchanged and unchangeable truth of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church thus launching a full frontal assault on your eternal souls. Dear family, for those complainers out there, I am not the problem, you are. And you will be held accountable for your failure to love Almighty God enough to get righteously angry 
when Bergoglio and his boys continue their assault in the godless and the damned synod on sin and sodomy. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> again, as I always say, don't take my word for it. Let us hear from the venerable Fulton J. Sheen again. Christian love bears evil, but it does not tolerate it. It does penance for the sins of others, but it is not broad-minded about sin. The cry for tolerance never induces it to quench its hatred of the evil philosophies that have entered into contest with the truth. It forgives the sinner and it hates the sin. It is unmerciful to the error in his mind, which is nothing other than, Fulton Sheen's words are nothing other than a restatement of the command of Almighty God who articulated it through the great prophet Ezekiel. You son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked man that he shall surely die and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked man from his way, he, the wicked man, shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked man, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. So again, dear family, when it comes to your eternal souls, it is not that I am too angry. It is that I am not angry enough. So with the words of Jesus, St. John the Baptist, the prophet Ezekiel, and the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, fresh in our minds, let us consider the truth I spoke 10 days ago when I said to Jorge Bergoglio and every American Cardinal, except Cardinal Burke, you will fall to your eternal damnation into the unquenchable fires of hell, to which I only can say out of love and concern for the eternal souls you are leading astray cannot happen soon enough. Dear family, when eternal souls are on the line, when they are endangered by the vipers in miters, the brood of vipers in miters, niceties go out the window. And that also applies to Jorge Bergoglio, the Bishop of Rome. Dear family, if there, if there has been any man in the history of the church, of the Catholic church, who deserves the great millstone, it is him. Now, I know a thing or two about the history of the Catholic Church, unlike the vast majority of people who do not even know the faith to which they claim to belong. And again, as always, you do not have to take my word for it. To his credit, Bishop Callahan recently reiterated to a gathering of people in La Crosse exactly what he said to me a couple years ago in his office. That 80% of Catholics do not know right from wrong because we bishops have failed to teach them for the last 50 years. It actually has been more than 50 years because as the great convert, Cardinal St. John Henry Newman said, watch, watch this, watch this. Cardinal St. John Henry Newman said over a hundred years ago, quote, the greatest tragedy in the Catholic Church is the ignorance of the laity. Defendant said that over a hundred years ago. And as Bishop Callahan stated, over the past 50 years, it only has gotten worse. Dear family, the Catholics don't know their sacred scripture, which is a problem. For as the great Saint Jerome said 1600 years ago, ignorance of sacred scriptures is ignorance of Jesus Christ. So the vast majority of people don't know sacred scriptures, don't know the faith to which they claim to belong, do not know right from wrong. All the more do they not have the first clue about church history. But I am informed about church history. So in my informed opinion, if there has been any man in the history of the Catholic Church deserving of what Jesus called the great millstone, it is Jorge Bergoglio, the Bishop of Rome. Jorge Bergoglio is not Catholic and therefore he is not the Pope. And in that video, I listed off just 20 examples. There are plenty more, but all those 20 examples demonstrate what is known in the law as a course of conduct. In common language, 
Actions speak louder than words. A course of conduct reveals the underlying character, nature of the person. It reveals the truth about what a person truly believes. And those 20 examples, there are more, irrefutably demonstrate beyond any shadow of a doubt that Bergoglio is not Catholic now. And because you know a tiger doesn't change his stripes, as those same 20 examples demonstrate, as his same course of conduct demonstrates, he was not Catholic at the moment he entered the conclave. And so I stated the obvious, that neither the Dalai Lama, nor any Protestant leader, nor any Islamic Imam, nor any Jewish rabbi could be elected, validly elected Pope, because they're not Catholic. Neither can Jorge Bergoglio be elected Pope because he is not Catholic. Nor was he Catholic 10 years ago. He is the epitome of a gospel wolf in sheep's clothing, if ever there was one. And dear family, you gotta take my word for it. Jorge Bergoglio is not the vicar of Christ on earth. He himself said so when he himself threw out the title into the dustbin of history. Which means, dear family, watch. Use the brains God gave you. The first vicar of Christ was who? Saint Peter, who was the last vicar of Christ, Pope Benedict XVI. Not because I said so, oh no. Not because that's my opinion. It's because Jorge Bergoglio said so. So what does Jesus the Lord teach us about what to do about such a wolf in sheep's clothing? Jesus gave us his teaching on the great millstone. Unless we have any doubts whatsoever about how that applies to Bergoglio and the Synod on Synodality, also known as the Synod on Sin and Sodomy, understand Jesus' teaching about the great millstone. If you haven't heard me talk about this before, I have a few times. I learned about this more recently. I always thought that this was one of the oddest things Jesus ever said, <laughs> kind of out of the blue, this great millstone. But there it was in the Gospels. If you lead my lambs astray, better someone tie a great millstone, not the small human-powered one, but the great big one powered by donkeys and oxen. I just read it. Listen, I fact-checked myself. I just read it in the last 24 hours. I researched it in the last 24 hours again. The great millstone might weigh over 3,000 pounds. And Jesus said, someone needs to tie that around your neck and throw you in the deep blue sea. It was not until recently that I came to understand what this meant. It just seemed like a very odd thing to say. Jesus said it would be better for capital punishment to be administered to the wolf in sheep's clothing than to let the wolf lead his lambs astray. So for the record, watch, this is an aside, for the record, Jesus approved of capital punishment and even gave express circumstances as to when it should be used against apostates in the hierarchy who are leading the lambs astray. So when Jorge Bergoglio claims falsely that there can be no capital punishment, he is preaching a false gospel. And as St. Paul said, let him be accursed. So exactly what form of capital punishment did Jesus teach that seems that seemingly strange aspect Jesus taught about the great millstone in the deep blue sea, rather than say, using the usual methods such as say stoning or crucifixion. Why the great millstone around your neck and thrown into the deep blue sea? Because, dear family, according to the Jewish mindset, the Jewish culture, the Jewish beliefs, then, as kind of now, if you, that is to say, if your body was not given a proper burial, then you would be accursed. Essentially, live eternity in turmoil in the eternal fires of Gehenna. So when Jesus taught about the great millstone, every single person there knew and understood the eternal consequences of being dragged irretrievably to the bottom of the deep blue sea by that 3,000 pound millstone. It wasn't that you would just die of capital punishment. That wasn't what Jesus was teaching. What it meant was 
that your body would not get a proper burial and you would suffer for eternity. So that day, Jesus taught that better that God damn you to the eternal fires of Gehenna than you lead my lambs astray with the false gospel. Do we understand the significance from the very mouth of Jesus. So now watch, when I said to Jorge Bergoglio, chief wolf in sheep's clothing, that for the sake of eternal souls, that he is leading astray, that his fall could not happen soon enough. What I said was exactly the same thing as Jesus our Lord taught in the gospel. Now, I can't expect many Catholics to know and understand that because they haven't been taught that for well over a hundred years now, according to St. Cardinal John Henry Newman. So for all those people out there who complained, or I call, I call them whiners, uh, who say, I want Bergoglio to go to hell, just actually read the gospel. R repeatedly and grasp the simple truth that what I said is exactly what Jesus taught. But if, you, but if you don't know your sacred scriptures, you don't know and understand what Jesus taught and, and you're just complaining without foundation. So let us close with the words of Pope St. Pius X who said the exact same thing 100 years ago and I quote, let the priests take care not to accept from the liberal any ideas which, under the mask of good, pretend to reconcile justice with iniquity. <laughs> Watch this next part. You'll love this next part. I actually underlined it and highlighted it. Watch this next part. Liberal Catholics are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's Pope Saint Pius the 10th. 100 years ago. Liberal Catholics are wolves in sheep's clothing. The priest must unveil to the people their, meaning the liberal Catholics, their perfidious plots, their iniquitous design. And he said about the priest that, that did reveal the perfidious plot and iniquitous design, you'd be called a papist, clerical, retrograde, intolerant. What are we hearing out of Rome these days? We make, he specifically attacked the American Catholics as being too rigid, wanting to go back in time, right? We're not moving forward with Jorge Bergoglio and his agenda. Well, Pope St. Pius X spoke to this 100 years ago. You'll be called clerical, retrograde, intolerant. But then he said this, but pay no heed to, to the derision and mockery of the wicked. Have courage. You must never yield nor is there any need to yield. You must go into the attack wholeheartedly, not in secret, but in public, not behind barred doors, but in the open, in the view of all. Out in the open, the truth is out in the open. And let us also close with the words of great, the great Archbishop Sheen more than 50 years ago. He's talking to you, my dear family. Who is going to save our church? He asked the question. Not our bishops, not our priests and religious. It is up to you, the people. Because here's what I get, dear family. Oh, who do you think you are, Father Altman? You don't have authority to say what you say. Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, said it more than 50 years ago. It's up to you, the people. You have the minds, the eyes, the ears to save the church. Your mission is to see, I love this, to see that your priests act like priests, your bishops, act like bishops, and your religious act like religious. And also let us close with the current icon of faith in the Catholic Church, the great Cardinal Seurat, who said, the church is dying because her pastors are afraid to speak in all truth and clarity. We are afraid of the media, afraid of public opinion, afraid of our own brethren. Then he, then he has one more line that talks about how we're supposed to not worry about the media or the public or the Judases amongst our brethren. He said, but the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But her family, it is long past time for a lot more good shepherds besides just the great Bishop Strickland 
of Tyler, Texas, who's under attack from none other than Jorge Bergoglio. The one bishop in this country who speaks up and speaks the truth and defends the Catholic faith is, un is under attack directly by Jorge Bergoglio, which only goes to prove that every single word I have said about Jorge Bergoglio is true. Thank you, Jorge Bergoglio, for giving me that one on a silver platter. It is long past time for a lot more good shepherds besides the great Bishop Strickland to stand up and speak the truth. And as Archbishop Fulton Sheen said, it's up to you, dear family, to demand it. Oh, may God give us the strength, the wisdom, and the grace to make such a demand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.